It's a Sunday here in the Transformer Swag Podcast world. We don't normally do Sunday segments, but today is 1027, a special event with Hasbro. They always do their 1027 events every year, regardless of what day they land on. And it is a Sunday 1027, and we got Nate from marketing, Evan from design, and of course, a special side segment with Mark Mayer from design with some big reveals. And we're going to do this in two separate segments because there's a lot to cover, despite the fact that it's really only two big items. Uh, we're going to start with Mark Mayer and his side segment, the big reveal for 2025, our brand new mainline Transformers Age of the Primes. And more specifically, the very first item we are going to be seeing today, the Age of the Primes leader class, the 13 Megatronus the Fallen very interesting way they're wording it so mark is the uh presenter for this it is a mark designed item along with yuya san from takar tomi and this is a very cool item because despite it being megatronus despite it being the fallen despite the multitude of designs that we've had of this character over the past 20 years uh, they decided to go with really the very first time we were introduced to this character. This design 100% pulls from the Dreamwave Transformers War Within comic books from 2003. All those years ago. He was originally designed by Andrew Wildman and later was turned into an action figure more famously by Don Figueroa through the Titaniums line. So it's really nice to see this this whole design bubbling back up to the face of the surface again after so many years of different Megatronus and Fallen designs since he was first publicly revealed. Uh, if anything, along with the, the side of a bo the box giving us the aesthetic look of what's going to be going on with the original 13, which we'll get into in a moment, uh, you know, it's just, it looks really good. It looks really good. And, you know, we've had depictions of the original 13 from the Covenant of Primus, the Transformers Prime TV series, and even most recently Transformers 1. And now we got a good idea of the direction aesthetically that they're going to be going with with the original 13 through the Fallen here and what we'll talk about in a moment, the side of the box art. Uh, back to the Megatronus though, some aspects of this figure, while they do pull from the Dreamwave version, we do see other indications of other versions of the Fallen and Megatronus included here. Number one, uh, his weapon that's included, the Requiem Blaster, which again, first was a concept used in Transformers Armada. It was just a powerful combiner minicon team that made a weapon. And uh, later that idea was repurposed as one of the legendary artifacts of the 13 created by Solus Prime and given to Megatronus. Uh, this design itself pulls from that Ken Christensen version of the character, that design, that aesthetic, that silhouette, which was featured in the Covenant of Primus book. And uh, even the slight Decepticon crown emblem on his head is also slightly more there in a retool of how the Fallen's head looks from Dreamwave there. So you got even a little bit of Ken Christensen floating around in that one. Um, but yeah, the blaster, as well as the box features a little Megatronus the Fallen Prime emblem also on it. And the emblems being featured on certain accessories is uh, something that's going to be introduced in a larger capacity of the collectability of this, which we'll get into in a moment. But this emblem is something that was introduced to us as fans by John Warden during his era, during Transformers Power of the Primes, when we got the original 13 as those little Prime Masters. And each one of them had a featured emblem on their trading cards and their figure proper. So there's going to be something going on with that, too. Because, again, on the blaster, as Mark mentioned, the collectability of collecting one of the original 13 artifacts. So this is going to be part of the line where the 13 primes, they're each going to have one of their legendary artifacts. And you want to collect all 13 of them. And each one of those artifacts will also feature an emblem of that associated character. So let the hunt begin as fans for all of that. I hope we kind of get a little Covenant of Primus book as an accessory. That way we could have a little to scale Transformers Bible book that our Transformers could be holding. That'd be kind of cool. It's probably going to come with Alpha Trion, but we'll see. Uh, but the deep cuts doesn't end there, in all honesty, because the other weapon that's included with Megatronus 
is this spark ex- spark fuser staff that is a nod to the Megatronus from the 2015 RID series where he had the spark fuser. And then the staff that Megatronus comes with here also comes apart and also could become a double-sided machete-bladed weapon, which also featured with the RID 2015 Megatronus character and was a weapon also featured with a lot of his accompanying toys for that line. So you got also a little bit of the Ken Christensen Covenant of Primus Megatronus. You got the RID 2015 one. So they're pulling from different versions here, not just the Dreamwave fallen Megatronus. You know, the weapons add to it and everything. So we got a nice little amalgam in a small sense of his 20-year history from some of his interpretations. Also, of course, he has to come with these. If we're talking blast effects, he's got a bunch of blast effects that make the flames on his body. They all could be attached through 5 millimeter pegs, like most of blast effects are. And uh, they also work in both, of course, in his robot mode, but could also make a flaming tank in his alt mode. And on top of it being a flaming ta- tank in his alt mode, those blast effects could also be attached to different parts of it to make the blast effects of the actions for the tank firing a cannon and stuff. So very cool. The tank has rolling wheels on the bottom. The Requiem Blaster for the robot mode makes the tank turret for the alt mode and has a a clip-on suppressor cap to make it much more like elongated tank cannon. And uh, the fictional explanation for that suppressor cap is because the Requiem Blaster was such a powerful weapon that could create black holes, you need to put a suppressor cap for the alt mode so he could still fight in battle and not completely wreck everybody when in tank mode. But yeah, very, very cool. Like I mentioned before, because we got to see the packaging also for the first time for Transformers Age of the Primes, and Marcelo, by the way, did an absolutely amazing job of the dual robot mode and alt mode box art, so fantastic work by him. And we see some really good use of using those original 13 emblems that'll probably be featured on the boxes for those individual characters to create that iconography for it. And they even for the first time in a while, showcasing on the front of the box uh, how many steps it takes to transform the figure. I haven't seen that in a while, so that's also going to be a thing now featured on the front. I would have preferred it on the back, but it is what it is for marketing reasons and for capturing people's eyes on the, the sales uh, floor for items. But uh, we also have the mention of 100% returning plastic windowed packaging. This is them addressing the issue that retailers had with heads being stolen and toys being swapped, so... Good to see the return for that, and let's hope we just kind of stick with that for our, you know, quality's sake. But a nice interesting note of anything else was what's going on on the side of the box. We had a Till All Our One and three bots on there, three golden statues with three emblems above them, those emblems coming from the 13. Clearly those three emblems are that of Liege Maximo, Megatronus that we already are talking about here today, and the 13th Prime. Now, the Liege Maximo clearly is pulling from that final panel of the G2 comic books of that version of him, his first time we were introduced to him again, uh, drawn by Jeff Sr. Looks, you know, looks really good that they're going with that one instead of the more recent uh, Liege Maximos we're used to that pulls a lot from Marvel's Loki, if anything. So it's nice that they're going to the origins of these characters and their first looks and going with those ones. And it's nice to see that because, I mean, let's be real, if you're going to just lean into the Loki one, it's going to be kind of on the nose. This at least is a much more demonic, almost like organic kind of design, and it's really cool to see them leaning into that and doing that for Liege Maximo. Can't wait to see that figure when we have it in person and how he transforms. The middle one, of course, is Megatronus, so we could skip that one because we already just talked about him. But the last one is a controversial one because that's the emblem of the 13th Prime, a.k.a. whoever's holding the Matrix at the time, the Matrix bearer at that moment. And judging by the overall design of this character, the turrets on the shoulders, the way the legs are designed, especially the bottom half, it looks like we're probably looking at our rumored Titan-class star Optimus Prime, a.k.a. Star Convoy. Heck, the old 13th Prime emblem is kind of a star. So Star Optimus Prime, I guess that's kind of on the nose. And yes, yeah, it has a very Power Master Optimus Prime chest. But I mean, when you look at the legs and you look at the turrets and everything, it's very much more or less Star Convoy they're clearly trying to go with here. And it's just a different interpretation of that version of the character. And it'll be our Titan class. 
And so it's something that at least we know where does our Titan class price point fit into the original 13 of this Age of Primes lineup. So yeah, that's pretty much more or less it. I'm going to leave it at that for now with you guys, and you can let me know how you feel about that one. But yeah, we have our very first look at Transformers Age of the Primes leader class 13th, and he's going to be going up on pre-order The Fallen uh, tomorrow at on October 28th, 2024, 1 p.m. for Hasbro Premium Plus members and 2 p.m. for everyone else. This is our very first pre-order and item of this new 2025 line, so get pretty hyped for that. I think it looks really, really good. And I love that we got finally something that's really a, a, a proper modern update of that old Titaniums figure that Don Figueroa did all those years ago of a very important character, in my opinion, an iconic character of this era that we still talk about today, especially because of Transformers 1. But let me know what you think about all of this. And we ain't done today. Oh, we are not done. Because we got one more devastating segment to talk about. So I'll see you much later. Later, later, later. But much later today in the near future. Okay.